<laughs> so we're now go. So anytime you're ready. Uh, so if you could just introduce yourself, Steve. Sure. So I'm Steve Rebell, Senior Vice President at Edelman Digital. I blog at MicroPersuasion.com, and I'm five foot ten. Excellent. <laughs> so first, but on a good day, I'm five eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I wear those lips too. Um, so, so the first thing that we can talk about is um, the intersection of search and reputation, which you mentioned as something that you see as being important uh, upcoming trend for for marketers. Absolutely. So what's <laughs> that? That's a big topic. Go. Let's say let's talk about golf. Oh well, you know. <laughs> but I think your observations around Google as a reputation engine, because I, I think marketers, particularly who've gotten into social media, may not really appreciate what's happening in Google, and particularly now with Google's um, wiki search. Yeah. So, well, look, look let's look at the statistics. Uh, Ninety percent of the of the population, all the population searches. And how they say it's 90% not 100% is beyond me, but no. It's always 10% out There's always that 10% that just does their webmail and that's it, right? And they do what they gotta do. That's right. Um, and so obviously, you know, and of that 90%, 72% are using Google. You know, and that's rising every, every week. So, um, the content that's in Google is increasingly shaped by three factors. Well, three forces. Um, brands, media, and consumers using social media. And, uh, and so what we're seeing is that if you create high quality content in Google on a regular basis, uh, so if you create high quality content online and you earn links from other high quality sources, you're rewarded through Google, which is why Wikipedia does amazingly well. Actually, Wikipedia is in the top five search, probably almost every brand you can think of. So, uh, unless they actually own a lot of domains. So it's becoming, you know, it's a place where people are influenced every day. And so you gotta know what's there and how you shape it and work with it and, and try to influence it in a in a positive way by also by creating high quality content that's linked to from other sources. And do you think the the SEO practice of going out and asking for links back to your great content is History. effective? History? It's history. It's about earning it. Yeah. It's about earning it. So I have a, a blog that has, you know, probably about six thousand blog posts over five years time. And you know, I'm not sure I I'm going to say in the neighborhood of 40,000 links overall from around the web, uh, which you can check. You, you could use Yahoo Site Explorer to see who's linking to you. And you know that's, and as a result, it's built up search equity, which I take very seriously. So I know that like if I were to you know blog your name, I could be number two probably for your name. You know, so I take that very seriously, and the responsibility goes with it with my clients, especially in how I talk about them, because I know I can I can shape the shelf if you will. And so I think that that's a big deal, and I think that um, now with Search Wiki, it gets even more interesting because now suddenly it's not just about quality content, it's about what people say about that content and having that transparency. I actually think Search Wiki is going to go down as a uh, failure. Yeah. I think there will, there, there will be so much spam and so much policing of it and so many complaints and, and, uh, and it's too open for... And there's no policing mechanisms. They'll they'll take it down. They'll retool it. And they'll bring it. They'll bring it back. But this is where, in a search result, that I, as a consumer, could leave a comment in the search results. So. Yeah, you can leave. And if you're another, and if you're a Google uh, registered member, you can see that. Uh, you can see all those comments. Okay. So I've already sent out an email to our teams, instructing them on how to check for that every day. Right. Because there's no RSS for that right now. There's no automated way to do that. So uh, that's gonna be hugely important for brands. Huge. If it does go down. And it's going to be important for brands to probably go in there and react and to uh, and to buttress what's there uh, as themselves. But when you know, it's when I think of Google is your front door. It's not your back door; it's your front door. And if you're, uh, you know, if if, uh, if if you got um, you know bugs on your front door, you're going to want to deal with them. Exactly. If you got <laughs> if you got roses on your front door, you're going to want to celebrate. Them. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm writing these blog posts as I go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you the video you can transcribe yeah, later. Please, remind we'll me later because I'm going to forget all this stuff. <laughs> we'll edit some things out. Uh, draw some mustaches on. It'll be lots of fun. Oh. <laughs> so the second yeah, if you put it in here, don't put it there. <laughs> <laughs> so the second thing I was really interested in, um, particularly you mentioned that in this new age of transparency, the role of agencies in PR and social media, with particular emphasis on the example that you are doing with Pepsi in their friend feed room, yep. um, Pepsi Cooler. Pepsi Cooler. So if you could talk to me about kind of what Pepsi Cooler is and how you are working with the brand um, to be transparent to that audience. Sure, and this is a good song too. Um, you know, so I'm working uh, with Pepsi on a few things. First of all, I'm helping them devise a, a, a strategy for their, their company about how to think about digital and social media that's kind of holistic and expanded. But beyond that, um, you know, they wanted to really 
figure out how to build a better relationship with influencers. And so um, they did a number of tactics, one of which was we suggested that they build a friend feed room because there are a lot of social media influencers like yourself who spend time on that site and we saw that as a, as a great platform to engage them in an open way. So, you know, like any good PR agency, we were behind the scenes, work with them, strategizing, helping them to you know, go forward themselves as, as themselves. But as part of that, um, you know, they started to say, you know, Steve, you're working with us. We really believe that you should be out there with us and, uh, and to, to show that this were part of the United team. And I ran it by our folks and said, what do you think? They said, that's what the client wants. You should do that. And I said, that's a good idea. So we're out there all together. Uh, and, uh, and I'm blogging, you know, I was calling it blogging, but I'm contributing content there less than they are. They're really kind of the voices there. But I, will, but I have been interactive. And I think it's important that we kind of show that we're a united front. And I think that's the future, that the agencies have to be transparent in who they work with and be participants sometimes in that process. And that's not always going to be comfortable. Yeah, so do you think most agencies are ready for that kind of transparency? No. And, and you know what? Neither are we probably in every instance. But and how are you are finding consumers reacting? Do they react to you differently than they react to the brand manager from Pepsi Bay? Or do you find uh, I think they, re they react to me because they may know me. I've been out there longer, and so they. Uh, but they also may look at me with a, you know, with what I open when I close, saying, you know, he's everything that he's going to do is to flog Pepsi on his own sites. Right. So there's a risk with that too. So uh, I mean, I have believe in that company, and I think, and I believe in them, and I think they're a fantastic. It's a dream to work with the brand. So I'm very proud of the fact that I'm out there. It's not really that controversial. Right. You know, if it was. Uh, uh, political campaign might be different or if it was something with some controversy it might be but you know you never know what's gonna happen I mean look at the motion thing I mean something could hit Pepsi in the face tomorrow and then I'm there with them and that, that's the risk it's every all these things are high risk high reward and then how are you measuring the success of the, the Pepsi killer Pepsi? Well, we're looking at a lot of metrics and reach and engagement and reputation and uh, less so in trial but uh, but more so we're looking at you know page views and uh, people who visited the site uh, we're looking at mentions on blogs, we're looking at uh, media mentions, we're looking at traffic, we're looking at comments, uptake, uh, we're looking at impact on search, we're looking at uh, uh, you know engagement within the site, and ultimately I think eventually we'll get to some looking at some more reputation metrics. Okay. And just staying on the topic of metrics for um, our last question. That's, well, that's a big topic these days. <laughs> well, we're going to try to narrow it down because so there's something, uh, I'd like to offer our readers something very practical. So this may be giving away a secret of yours. We'll see what happens. Um, do it every day. Really <laughs> interested to hear um, about you using Wordle. Yeah. And I would just love if you would just share that, share an example of how you guys use Wordle as a, and maybe explain well, what Wordle is. Well, sure. Wordle is a site that you could use to build uh, word clouds, uh, pretty much any content you throw at it. So the problem with bloggers, a good, good problem to have, is that they could. Uh, I want to be very clear. No, like the problem with bloggers, shake your finger. Uh, is, uh, is, is that sometimes there's a lot of gray area. You know, somebody can blog about President Bush, and the next post they go about their cat having a hairball. Right? It's not kind of, it's not hard edges. It's not always you know. Say, there's some bloggers that cover a certain topic and that's what they stick with. But even within that, there's lots of variations. Well, you can take feeds and you can run them through Wordle, and you really see what's top of mind on those people's site. And I believe if you really can get at tendencies, and you can learn, what well, people are people are creatures of habit. I mean, you know, you put your your shoes on. I'm sure the same order every day. I do too. And if you can kind of understand that and understand what's behind somebody, now part of it involves many people like I'm meeting you today, but it also involves that you can actually study what they say and what they do, and learn from that, and you can be more effective in what you do. World's also amazing. You can take for me, you can take. Uh, I can take every column that Walter Mossberg, who's a big technology columnist in the United States, for the last five years and went through Wordle and I see what, what themes emerge. Great way to visualize data. Awesome. Those are all my questions. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank thank you. you very much. It's really great.